Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? Hey, Brian. I'm okay. Looks like we got another weekend to spend in uh, New Orleans. Yeah. What's wrong with that, Matt? Always good to be down in New Orleans. We're not physically there, but we're there in spirit. Louisiana Derby Day on Saturday, Matt. It's a big one. Million dollars. We've seen some horses recently come out of this path to the Kentucky Derby and do well in the Triple Crown races. There's the headliner, Instant Coffee. That's him winning the LeCompte over the track nine weeks ago, Matt. He's back, and he is the headliner in this Louisiana Derby. Mile three sixteenths on Saturday at Fairgrounds. Let's take a look at the field. We'll start with him. Matt, number two, he's a rallier, but he's drawn to the inside. Two to one on the morning line for a horse who hasn't run in nine weeks and uh, might be looking at a race without a lot of speed. Yeah, it, it looks that way, Brian. Big field, the 12, that long stretch at Louisiana Derby. Uh, at, at Sorry, that long stretch at the fairgrounds for the Louisiana Derby. Um, we got four horses coming back from the Risen Star in this field. We got three horses that have wins on the Derby Trail already. Uh, and, and Instant Coffee's got two of those wins. I think that Forte is the only other horse on the Derby Trail going back to last year that has multiple wins. Um, it's hard not to have Instant Coffee on top in my opinion, based on his record, based on those wins. Um, it seems like uh, Brad Cox is uh, giving even more time between starts. Thus, you mentioned that uh, Instant Coffee hasn't run since LeCompte. Yeah, it's been, it's been a little while, and I, I think he ha has found uh, maybe the deepest field so far on the Kentucky Derby Trail. You got 11 other horses here, Matt. And honestly, I couldn't completely. There, there's some long shots. There's some der deserving long shots in this Louisiana Derby, sure. But I couldn't completely throw out even the biggest long shots in this race. So uh, I, I wonder, Instant Coffee, yeah, he's been good. He's won three out of four. You know, he was fourth to Forte in his second career race in a grade one. Come back with two nice grade graded stakes wins since. One last year, one this year, one over the track. He's never been farther than a mile of 16th. Uh, a lot of horses in the race can say that same thing. But uh, on the other hand, I, I'm not sure I want him as a clear and present favorite in, in this uh, deep of field. But uh, Instant Coffee has been good. The horse to beat, Luis Saez, who won recently on the Derby Trail with, uh, uh, of course, Tapit Thrice, comes back on Instant Coffee as the horse to beat. He's only one of three for trainer Brad Cox. And, of course, Brad Cox has been a big name not only in New Orleans, but also on the Kentucky Derby Trail this year, Matt. He's got two other interesting horses in the field outside a little bit. Number nine, Tappet's Conquest, I think is an interesting horse. He's one of those horses you mentioned coming out of the uh, uh, Risen Star. So he got that nine for a long race. I guess he hung just a little bit, but uh, it was a pretty good performance in his graded stakes debut. And I think he could move forward, the son of Tappet, on Saturday. Yeah, I think he could also. You know, he, he did have a wide trip uh, coming around the final turn, uh, heading into the stretch in there. Uh, you know, it was a pretty impressive top three uh, in the risen star so yeah i feel like he uh certainly is a win contender for brad cox yeah and the other brad cox horse is interesting as well i'm not sure i like the post position draw for the 11 jace's road but i alluded to the fact that this may race may not have a lot of speed jace's road is a horse who can be on the lead early and matt if you look at his races and you draw a line through two sloppy tracks he becomes a threat uh, absolutely, Brian. I, I did the exact same thing with my uh, past performances when I was handicapping, noting that uh, uh, Jace's Road now clearly doesn't like sloppy tracks because those two sloppy races were so, so different from all of his other races where he uh, 
uh, ran well. Um, Jace's Road, one of those horses that I mentioned that already has a win um, on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Um, this is a field where I guess, except for uh, Instant Coffee, who probably has enough points to get into the field already, it's kind of now or never for the rest of these horses if they're going to get into the Derby. Uh, they're going to have to come up with a good race. Jace's Road, probably going to be the longest price of the three Brad Cox horses, is interesting to me. Yeah, he could be. Or it could be Tappet's Conquest. Uh, I think both will have decent odds. But yeah, you're probably right. Chase's Road, uh, the highest of the three Cox horses on Saturday. Here we have the Timeform US pace projector. And you see there's just not a lot of action up front. There's a whole lot of action behind. There's a lot of horses in here, Matt, who like to come from either mid-pack or farther back. That leaves only about three who really look like they could be out there. And that includes the 11 who we just talked about. And the horse, I think, who'll be the second choice, Kings Barnes. He didn't wire that allowance romp at Tampa Bay Downs last time, but he made a quick burst of speed on the turn to just completely take over that race. Far different class of horse. He was beating there at Tampa Bay Downs, but Kings Barnes, two for two for trainer Todd Pletcher. I think he becomes more of a threat in his graded stakes debut because of the lack of speed here. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, two races uh, in his short career in Florida, both of them at a mile, but at Gulfstream it was a one-turn mile. So he went, when he went to Tampa, he was able to navigate the uh, two-turn mile race uh, really well. Um, uh, uh, a son of Uncle Mo, so, you know, the extra distance in the uh, – Mile and three sixteenth Louisiana Derby uh, question, but on the dam side, uh, there is a graded stakes place horse who did it going long. There you go, Matt, and 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 I do think the question of distance is, is one that a lot of these horses, even Instant Coffee, to some respect, a son of uh, Bolt Doro, has to answer here because a mile three sixteenths is a whole new ball game for all of these horses. Uh, so you see Kings Barnes there, sixth. Uh, I guess he's the third choice on the morning line. I have a feeling he'll be a little bit lower. Uh, let's talk about some others. Matt, let's talk about some other trainers in here. We talked about Brad Cox a lot. What about the Steve Asmussen pair? Because largely untested, but I think both one, Shopper's Revenge, and five, Disarm, are very interesting horses for Steve Asmussen. Yeah, very interesting. Shoppers Revenge certainly very interesting with uh, with the breeding. Uh, uh, another son of Tappet out of the wonderful uh, mare uh, Stop Charging Maria, who earned over three million on the track. Uh, uh, multiple uh, Grade One winner. Um, great uh, breeding, which we're used to seeing for horses that are owned by. Uh, by Mandy Pope. Um, so again, uh, this one's going to have to make a big step forward uh, from his uh, maiden special weight win at Oaklawn Park and, uh, and then a second in an allowance race. So asking a lot um, in terms of experience, in terms of the size of the field, breaking from the rail, etc. The one thing I will say about Shopper's Revenge, perhaps more than any horse in this field, if I was going to look at pedigree and who would want to run farther, it could be that son of Tap It and Stop Charging Maria, Shopper's Revenge. I also think Disarm is extremely interesting here, Matt. I, I, I think Disarm is a nice horse. We saw him do good things last year, early last year, in the summer of his juvenile season for Asmussen. Disarm, a son of Gunrunner was a, a good rallying third at Churchill in a five and a half furlong sprint, and then went to Saratoga and beat good horses easily. One of the more impressive maiden wins at Saratoga last year belongs to Disarm. He was off for nearly eight months, Matt, and he came back and he was a little short, went second in an allowance race, but it makes every uh, sense in the world to me that both Shopper's Revenge could move forward, but also Disarm could move forward. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And and I guess, you know, I, I'm not quite as excited about this arm as I was in the summer, you know, with 
all the time that's gone by. It just feels like now they're they're rushing a little bit to uh, take a shot with disarm uh, in in the Louisiana Derby to, to grab a pretty good chunk of points. Yeah, he's got work to do, but on the other hand, I think he could be of the quality to do it, Matt. Uh, so many interesting other horses here. Curly Jock was a nice stakes winner at two. Sun Thunder, uh, one of two for Kenny McPeak, was the horse that actually finished best out of all of these Risen Star horses when he rallied for second last year, uh, uh, last time in the Risen Star. Uh, Cagliostro and uh, Dennington are coming out of a nice allowance battle where they both ran well last time. Uh, uh, even Single Ruler has shown some flashes coming from way back and, and Baseline Beat or anybody else in that group you want to talk about a little bit? Yeah, you know, you mentioned these deep closers. There, there are like three deep closers um, uh, who uh, are interesting in this field. You know, normally when I see horses that get so far behind early in a race, you know, uh, it's hard for me to endorse them. But if you're going to be a deep closer um, in a race, well, the mile and three sixteenths, the long stretch, et cetera, um, I guess is the best kind of scenario to be in. You got plenty of time, but boy, you got to work out a really good, uh, really good trip, a perfect trip in this kind of race, getting that far behind to be able to win. Yeah, you see a lot of those deep closers here again, represented in the time form U.S. pace projector, including instant coffee down on the rail. Uh, a little bit farther back than uh, half the field there. Uh, baseline beater is uh, way back, but uh, a lot of the others, the, the, the four, the seven, the nine, the 10, that includes Sun Thunder and, and Cagliostro and Tappet's Conquest all figure to be a little bit farther back off that early pace. An interesting race for sure. Maybe one that's set up uh, to uh, uh, favor a horse who's closer to the lead. We'll see. But the Louisiana Derby should be fun. It's a million-dollar race, and it's become a real key prep. I, I like the change that they made recently to a mile three sixteenths to get these horses ready for the Kentucky Derby as, as we see horses not making another start after this uh, late March uh, Kentucky Derby prep. Matt, we're talking Kentucky Derby. Let's switch to the Kentucky Oaks, a much, much smaller field uh, lining up for the uh, Fairgrounds Oaks, which has – produced a lot of uh, not only Kentucky Oaks winners, but a lot of Kentucky Oaks contenders in recent years. And while this field is short, as far as the number of horses in the field, I, I think there's a, three horses in here that you would have to consider top 10, if not better, Kentucky Oaks uh, contenders at this point in time. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the three, four, and five in this field have some on the fairgrounds uh, racetrack with a win in the Rachel Alexandra and before that uh, with a win in the untappable. Uh, very, very nice horse. Yeah, Pretty Mischievous is actually the favorite on the morning line. I actually think Hoosier Philly, who's gotten much more action in the Kentucky Oaks and even the Kentucky Derby uh, uh, future wagers uh, of recent, will be the favorite over Pretty Mischievous, but uh, this is the rubber match between the two because they split. Who's your Philly beater? Pr pretty uh, beat pretty mischievous pretty easily last fall in the Goldenrod. Pretty mischievous turned the tables last time when Who's your Philly was a heavy favorite. So uh, a, a rematch there. Also a rematch with the Alley's look because Pretty mischievous uh, is the only Philly to beat the Alley's look down in New Orleans. Yeah, uh, and, and the Alice look for uh, Brad Cox, another one of those horses that we were talking about. Um, uh, she came back and won the Silver Bullet Day. And then, again, like we talked about uh, in the Louisiana Derby with Instant Coffee, uh, um, the Alice look having a little bit of a longer uh, break between races. Yeah, the Alice look hasn't run since that untappable. While Pretty Mischievous, of course, came back and won the uh, Rachel Alexandra last time over Hoosier Philly, 
was making her first start match. I did not like the uh, uh, the ride, the trip that Hoosier Philly got. I, I think things were against her. After a break, uh, the fact that she was bumped and was behind and was in between horses, I think that took some starch out of her. Hoosier Philly certainly could uh, have what it takes to turn the tables on her rival this time, but also could make a pretty good step forward off of that return race. Yeah, and and you know Tom Amos here with uh, Hoosier Philly and then Curly Jack and the Louisiana Derby, both of those horses came back and were a little bit disappointing for Amos. So we'll see what he can do. Uh, both of them, if they get back to running the kind of races that we've seen in the past, are you know are contenders. Yeah, Curly Jack was a nice two-year-old. We didn't talk about him a lot because he didn't run very well. Uh, in his return race either. But I guess you could say the same for Hoosier Philly. She she got up for third, but she was not uh, really close to pretty mischievous last time. But I, I think there are some signs there that tell me Hoosier Philly could bounce back. And the alley's look has been good in all three of her races uh, since uh, coming down to two turns, coming down to fairgrounds, uh, some good signs there. South Lawn for Norm Cassie was an impressive winner last time. Although she got Lasix, and you can't use Lasix in these uh, Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks preps at fairgrounds. And Christian Dioro, Odor Odoro, uh, has a lot of speed coming from New Mexico for trainer Steve Asmussen. Yes, and and a uh, 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 trainer change uh, when uh, uh, Christian Dioro, uh, kind of a, a tongue twister and a play on. Uh, 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 designers. Um, he changed Barnes from T Todd Fincher, who dominates the Southwest Circuit, and moved to uh, the barn of Steve Asmussen. Yeah, yeah, Christian Christian Dioro. I think we might have a misspelling there in the in in, in the uh, odds. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to double check. But she's she's pure speed. She'll have to prove it against this field and at this distance. South Lawn. I worry about the switch off of Lasix after looking so good with Lasix last time. But certainly the the outside three horses are, are the three that will get the most action here in the fairgrounds Oaks. All right, we're talking Kentucky Derby preps. We're talking Kentucky Oaks preps and big races in their own right, Matt. But I think there's another, uh, well, there are a lot of good stakes at fairgrounds on Saturday. But maybe the more interesting of the rest, the most interesting of the rest is is a nice race for older males. And, you know, you could you could point to the Pegasus World Cup as the best older male race of the first four months of the season or so in America, or, or maybe even a little bit more than that. But I think this one, the New Orleans Classic, is uh, at least in the ballpark as far as the number of stakes winners and, and good horses that are lining up on Saturday here. It's nine furlongs, $400,000, the New Orleans Classic, Art Collector, speaking of the Pegasus World Cup, Matt, he, uh, he's coming back. This is his first race since a big win in the Pegasus World Cup. He's the number one rated horse in America right now, and he's the horse to beat coming out of the two-hole in the New Orleans Classic. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. Uh, that was a very impressive win in the Pegasus uh, World Cup, which uh, has uh, given him the number one ranking amongst uh, American horses. Um Coming back, uh, we'll see. A deserving favorite, hard to you know uh, look beyond Art Collector, not just based on the Pegasus World Cup, but uh, you know other uh, other really good victories that he has had in his career. Um, this will be his first start at Fairgrounds, but he loves the mile and an eighth distance. Yeah, he, he's well proven at the mile and eight distance, that's for sure. And coming off that big win in the Pegasus World Cup, Matt, he kind of showed a different uh, a different ability where we're so used to him wiring races. Back early in his career, he was able to pass horses and win. But in the Pegasus World Cup, he kind of had to do it, and he did it impressively. A big win in the Pegasus World Cup. He might have to do it again, Matt, because if we look at this field, there's a bunch of speed. Starting with the one, Treasury uh, certainly has been running in cheaper races than this, but Treasury has a lot of speed. And then just to his outside and in the three hole, Westwell Power is a nice older horse, kind of lightly raced early on in his career, but he's proven to be a graded stakes horse and he has a lot of speed. 
Uh, so I think maybe even Pioneer Medina doesn't mind being too far off the lead. So our collector will have to work early and, and probably not be on the early lead again. We'll see what happens, but uh, that could be a concern for the favorite. Let's talk a little bit more about West Willpower, who, like I said, has become a very nice horse and, and comes in with a pretty solid form over over the last year or so. Yeah. Brad Cox, uh, uh, another son of Bernard, Bernardini, um, a really nice second in the Razorback, which is a grade three, another nice second in the, uh, in the Clark um, at Churchill Downs uh, last year, won the Fayette at Keeneland, got a really good, you know, a really good resume, a lot of speed in there. I don't know if he's going to be able to get a win against this kind of field yeah last time he was beaten by last samurai who absolutely loves oakland park and won another uh graded stakes race at oakland park just last weekend uh yeah but we are looking at quite a bit of speed in the one two three here in the new orleans classic outside let's go far outside matt we got mr wireless and pioneer medina in the seven and eight hole uh third fourth choice second fourth choice perhaps in the new orleans classic but after our collector everybody will have pretty good odds in here and mr wireless and pioneer of medina threw down pretty well in their last meeting yeah that's for sure uh, pioneer uh, medina got the win um in the mine shaft by a head um and mr wireless hey what can you say he 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 is so game He's got three seconds in a row. The last two of them have just been basically on head bobs by a neck, by a head. Uh, um, again, getting a really good setup for his running style. I do think he's getting a good setup because he will be off the early lead a little bit. He's he's a horse with tactical speed, but he'll he'll be sitting ahead of the late runners, but behind the early speed. And that could be true for Pioneer Medina as well but mr wireless figures to be fifth or so early and that could be a good spot here i do wonder if he wants a mile and eighth as much as a mile 16th especially compared to maybe pioneer medina who probably mm, is better suited for going a little bit longer here this is nine furlongs though so this is a kind of a fair distance for every horse in this race certainly two big threats uh coming out of their last race mr wireless and Pine pioneer medina who by the way, Pioneer Medina, trained by Todd Pletcher, certainly has proven himself over this track with a bunch of good performances at fairgrounds, including the last one. Two other horses we should mention, Matt, are the five and the six. Rattle and Roll is a grade one winner. Uh, of course, that came back in his two-year-old year, but he uh, he was a, a derby collector last year with a with a bunch of those off the uh, off the main trail uh, derby races. I guess he did it in St. Louis and and Oklahoma, places like that. But Rattle and Roll proved to be a, a nice horse. He can come off the pace. He'll be making his first start of the year. And then Happy American was the hot horse uh, up until his last start where he really didn't do anything. Yeah, that's that's for sure. But Happy American uh, has two really nice wins at fairgrounds uh, in the Louisiana and the uh, Tenacious. So we're talking about horses like happy american like rattle and roll who it's not very hard it, it's not hard to go through their past performances and find races that they have won that uh if they can get back to them are are contenders in this field yeah i can completely agree with that uh rattle and roll will have to prove it against good older horses especially in his first start of the year but if this pace is hot like it could be uh two very interesting horses in rattle and roll and happy american Happy American, you just have to draw a line through the last race. Uh, maybe he's ready to go off form for a while. I don't know. The last race was seriously bad, but draw a line through that one, and Happy American becomes a huge threat in this New Orleans Classic to come from off the pace. All right, Matt, we, uh, we didn't even talk about the Dubai World Cup. We're expecting country grammar to face a lot of good Japanese, European, uh, and Middle Eastern horses over there. Uh, so it'll be an interesting World Cup. But this was uh, this was a Kentucky Derby Trail kind of day for us, looking at the big card, a great card from the fairgrounds. Uh, many other stakes besides the three we covered, but three very good ones that we covered. Now it's time for us to give our top picks. Matt, as always, we're going to start with you. 
And we're going to start with that Louisiana Derby, the million dollar race where we could see a horse or two become real threats for the Kentucky Derby. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. Uh, um, we talked about the field quite a bit and, and uh, um, the, the horses that, you know, have a shot. I mean, I, I feel strongly that the winner is going to come from uh, the Brad Cox barn. Um, I, I, I like uh, Jace's road in terms of if the track's going to be fast, maybe he can get back to um, what he was doing. But um, instant coffee, uh, Brian, to me, has the credentials and is the horse to beat. Yeah, and, and I'm not going to disagree with that, Matt. There's your top pick, uh, Instant Coffee. What I am going to disagree with is I, I see this as a wide open race. I see this as 12 pretty nice three-year-olds and and really six or seven that wouldn't surprise me winning. So for that reason, I'm not going to be on the favorite here. I, I'm looking at another Brad Cox, so I guess I do agree with you on that point as well because I think Tappet's Conquest is a horse who's suited for a, a little bit longer. Not proven last time in the Risen Star, but I think he needed that experience. I also think he can be a little bit closer to the pace than some of the horses who want to come from farther back, and that might include his stablemate, Instant Coffee. I, I also, of course, like the big odds difference in, in the two. So I'm going to go with a little bit of a, a long shot in here. Uh, double digits on the morning line. Top its conquest. Uh, improving will be my top pick in the Louisiana Derby. Uh, the Fairgrounds Oaks was our second race, Matt, and um, it boils down to the three favorites, I think. Uh, who are you on in the Fairgrounds Oaks? It does, Brian. Uh, um, and the, you know, that performance by Hoosier Philly uh, last time certainly uh, was not a positive for me. And even though she won all of her races uh, impressively before that, um, they just were not fast performances um the pretty mi mischievous and and um uh, the alice look are very nice horses so i'm gonna go with uh, the alice look um maybe the third choice in this race i absolutely think you will have the third choice in this race matt and don't forget on the morning line pretty mischievous is actually the favorite although again i kind of expect my top pick who's your filly to end up the favorite i just look at that last race uh the the uh, uh rachel alexandra as a race where who's your filly just nothing went right for her early and sometimes horses get frustrated when that happens and i i think it happened to who's your filly she's working really well since i still have faith in her i think she can bounce back pretty mischievous the alleys look are very nice fillies who who likely deserve to be moving on to the kentucky oaks but I still think Hoosier Philly has the potential to be the best real Philly in the country. She's my top pick in the Fairgrounds Oaks. And finally, we're going to look at the New Orleans Classic, Matt. And uh, this is a race where we, I think we got a pretty clear favorite in the Pegasus World Cup winner. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of Art Collector. I'm a big fan of uh, the career that he has put together now over a, over a few years. I'm a big fan of the connections, Bill Mott and the uh, – and the owner, um, and and sure seems like a horse that I would normally be picking. But you know what? I'm going to take a shot, and and I'm going to one more time, one more time. I'm going to go with my man, Mister Wireless. Uh, maybe, maybe he'll get the right setup and and win at the wire this time. But Brian, don't let me pick him again. Well, Matt, wins, yeah. you want him to win at the wire, but his name is Mr. Wireless, doesn't ah. that? <laughs> hey, three straight seconds. I, I, I'm not sold on Mr. Wireless, but you know, if you're looking to beat the favorite, why not Mr. Wireless? And he probably won't be the second or probably even the third choice in here. So can't fault the uh, the try with Mr. Wireless. I wanted to try to find somebody to beat our collector. The problem is I just had a negative on every other horse in the race. There's no one that stood out to me. I, I thought Tappet's Conquest made a lot of sense in the Louisiana Derby as a potential upsetter of the favorite. I don't have that here. I, I, I think there are 
reasons why I don't like anybody else as much as our collector. And he came from off the page just a little bit last time. I think that's a great sign moving forward. The class of the race, I'm going with Art Collector in the New Orleans Classic. All right, Matt, three big ones from New Orleans. I hope our fans enjoyed it here on Horse Center. I hope we have given you some help in cashing big at a big day at the Big Easy. Before we go, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, hey, you mentioned uh, that we didn't really talk about the Dubai World Cup. Well, we didn't talk about a couple of other uh, derby preps also. They're going to be on the Tapita in the in the Jeff Ruby Stakes um, uh, this weekend also for horses that, that like that surface can get themselves a spot in, uh, uh, in the gate on the first Saturday in May. And we also have the what it's slipping my mind. What's the other derby, Brian? The the other derby prep this weekend. We're we're, we're coming from uh, New Mexico, are we? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes. The Sunland Park Derby, absolutely. Um, it is on Sunday. A smallish field uh, uh, that is a, a big points derby race, also. Yeah, absolutely. Should be a telling day for the Kentucky Derby Trail for a lot of these horses. And Matt, I believe last year your top Kentucky Derby long shot came from the Jeff Ruby Stakes, among <laughs> among other horses. Hey, I want to thank our friend in Louisville, Candace Curtis, for the race graphics. Three of them today. Thanks to Timeform US for the pace projection. Thanks to Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And more than anything, folks, thanks to you for tuning in every week here on Horse Center. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet. Don't miss another show, especially as we get closer to the Kentucky Derby. And we'll be talking more Kentucky Derby next week right here on Horse Center. Until then, good luck. Cash them big at the races this weekend.